Good morning. Oh, I see. I see. I see you, Ellen. What's going on? I see Janae. What's going on? Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good morning. Good morning to you. All right. Welcome. 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 I'm having my usual, having my elixir of the leaders. I hope everyone's doing well. Good morning. On this uh, September 25th, last Sunday of the month of September. And I'm so excited that it's the last month because that means that in two weeks where I work, we're going to have fall break. And, ooh, I could use the break. Do you hear me? I could really use the break. And I hope everyone is doing is doing well this morning. And so um, because of time, you know, like, let's go ahead and let's, and, let, and, let, and let's get into it. I want to thank you all, you know, for being here. Uh, good morning. I am Dr. Thomas Richard Easley here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And... Um, going to be sharing uh some uh you know some 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 insights for what we're going to be doing today at church uh at peace church and meets at uh, nc state's campus 2018 cakes with a seat case avenue at 11 a.m room 126 the seats uh see you there let's get all of the formalities out of the way uh you can um follow me also youtube.com uh, uh, forward slash r-a-s-h-a-a-d-i twitter and instagram rashad ease e-a-s um I'm also on Facebook, uh, dot com forward slash uh, Rashad Easley. Uh, as a hip hop artist, I'm on SoundCloud, Thomas R. Easley. Website, RashadEasley.com. So you can check out all, all of the all of those good things. You can see me there and um, we can have some 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 other exchanges. So let's go ahead and let's uh and let's get and let's get into um into into what it is uh, that we're here to talk about um today. A lot of things, of course, are still going on in the country around race issues in particular and so today in church we're going to talk about that but we're going to do it sort of a different way we're going to have the students get together and we're going to answer three three questions okay but before i give you the questions i'll give you the title of what it is that we're going to be talking about and the title is what is my purpose in any given moment what is my purpose in any given moment um this morning I got up and uh, the, uh, there's a church uh, that I frequent that I like to follow online besides my home church, which is Poplar Springs Christian Church. Uh, but it's uh, Andy Stanley's church. Um, your uh, and um, I think it's um, North Point. Yeah, North Point in Georgia. And you can check him out at yourmove.is. Is. And this morning they had a real conversation about race, racism, and religion and on the show uh he had two african-american males on the show and it was something to listen i didn't watch it but i actually listened to it and it was interesting to listen to how andy raises his kids and what he teaches his kids versus what his other guests were talking about what they teach their kids what they talk about with kids in the community you know and and um and uh and uh, andy was like you know he basically just kind of teaches his kids you know like we like cops and the cops are our friends you know not really much else to it, like n not a lot of special, you know, uh, a lot of special um, um, instruction. And his other guests come at it differently. One, they wasn't, ra they were not raised seeing the cops as their friend number one, and so they're taught all of these other things that they have to do to stay safe. Like, put, keep your hands on the wheel, keep your hands out, like, like you know, like that. If uh, someone tells you to show you, show you their, their ID, you know, ask them, will you please get it for me? It's in my back pocket or it's in my side pocket, you know, because. You know, because one of the problems is that not that protecting and serving is a problem. It's the posture that usually people come into our neighborhoods with because they come into our neighborhoods already on edge. And as we saw, even with the situation that just recently happened in uh, Charlotte, uh, Keith, a um, uh, brother who just recently lost, uh, lost his life, and even Terrence was a corrector out in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, it's like it's um, it's like by the time the police get there, the situation's already escalated. So, so you know, so so it's like so the cops don't even come, you know, to to our neighborhoods or to our side of town ready to be peaceful. Period. You know, it's like they already come on edge. So the fact that pulling a gun is already the option. And what they also said is that what police 
you know, you know, have, uh, you know, said is, you know, like um, to, to him because he was going to interview two, two police officers, but they didn't come on the show. So he took what they said and then and he shared it with the crowd, you know, is that one thing that I heard a lot of things. And it was kind of like uh, it was a it was an amalgamation of things. It was like one, you know, first we show up, you know, do do what we say. Don't ask questions. Don't try to tell us your rights because because we already know them. You know, so basically, it's kind of like we're we we are there to de as the police individuals. We're there to de escalate the situation. But what we're really trying to do is get is get control. You see, and that right there is interesting. You know, um, you know because exactly I do too. Um, you know that that they use that that their main thought is to get control. And I, you know, and I, and, and I'll be honest, for, as a, as an African American male, I'm a little concerned about that. You know that that's your, you know, you know like that that's the instant um, mode, you know, that that you're in, which is to get control. Because one of the things that he said, the cop said, is that when the guns come out, they're not going back in. You see, so that right there is what makes me nervous because that tells me that there's already this posture, you know, of um. You know, of I'm I'm re I'm ready to shoot. You know, like I'm like I'm I'm already ready to shoot. But what I've also have seen is that well, and what was also said on the same show is that, but it's not like that in every neighborhood. You see, it's not like that in every interaction. So every interaction that you know, like they go into, you know, you, you know, you know, the cops shouldn't be ready not only to just get control, but ready to use the gun. And the fact is that by the time it comes out, because because of their training, you know, it's um. You know, it's not it's not it's not going back in. And one of the reasons why I find that really interesting and actually kind of scary is because when I think about our military and how they are trained, they aren't trained like that. You see, and they go into what I would consider actual or real real war zones. Now, of course, that's more subjective, you know, but they have months and months of training and they're using multiple weapons <laughs> and they don't have that kind of. You know, like kind of like mindset, you know, to go in and these are military. You see what I'm saying? I mean, like they go places where they're actual bombs, not just places where they're guns and gangs. They go where they're like bombs and a lot of other things. And they're trained a whole lot differently. And so I just find, you know, and so so as I was listening to 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 Andy Stanley's, um, um, you know, not really sermon, but but his presentation this morning, that really kind of brought to mind to me, like, you know, yet again, like why there are some of the issues that we have, like point blank. You know, which is that the way people are trained is a problem. You know, the way people enter a situation is a problem. And that doesn't mean that perpetrators of people in community that do wrong and do bad things are not the problem. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that to serve and protect is something that I, I hey, I want that too. But it seems like more people get a different version of serving and, and, and protecting compared to other people. Mm -hmm. And so this is why, oh, that's my speaker. And so, and, and so, and so this is why, you know, we, uh, you know, I want, I wanted to come on and talk mm -hmm. about, you know, what's my purpose in, in any given uh, moment. And so, uh, one of the things, so, so here go the questions that the students are going to answer this morning, you know, which is what questions or questions about God do the recent events raise for you? So we're going to have them to, to answer that. And we want to talk about that because there have been some students and people who've already, you know, are wondering, like, well, one, why is this happening? And, of course, there's someone asked, why is God allowing this to happen? So we want the students to actually be able to, to talk about that to each other. The second question that we're going to address is, what questions about church do the recent events raise for you? Uh, because I do believe that back in the day and even now, the church has played kind of a role in how we've reached the community, helped the community, and maybe into some people it could be don't help the community, maybe hurt hurt the community. But what questions about church do the recent events raise for you? Because church has been kind of like how how the barbershop is uh, in the black community. And yesterday we were talking about, I mean, Friday I did a dinner for graduate students here at my home, and we were talking about how community centers are um you know how critical they are to the you know like to um to to the black community and how where well, you have community centers um you you know you have a space where black kids can go and you know play and kind of get a lot of their energy out so when they leave and go home i guess any kid who goes to a community center they can like focus on their homework or they can rest because they're tired because they've gotten this, this energy out 
And in communities where you don't have community centers, there's kind of like a correlation between crime uh, because because the kids are not using their time you know, wisely and they're not using their energy. And then the final question is, what questions about yourself do the recent events raise for, uh, raise for you? You know, like how do you feel about your safety? How do you feel about your presence? Or what is it that what is it that they are supposed to do? And so um, and so that's what we're going to, uh, you know, those are the questions that we're going to analyze today in church. And we're going to do it, you know, do them in like focus groups. So today won't be your normal day of just sit and listen to a sermon. Today is going to be a very engaging and and interactive time, and it's also going to be. I think we're going to have uh, our black Greek lettered um, uh, um, organizations are going to be there today too. So I think we're going to have a packed house today, because usually when we have that, you know, I mean, everybody comes out. So all the alphas, the AKAs, the the uh, Sigma Zetas, Kappas, SG Rose, Omegas, and the Deltas. I don't think we have any Iotas on campus, but all of the Greek letter organizations come out. And one of the things that we have decided is that we're not going to make the Sunday about our Greek letter organizations, but we're going to make sure that the Sunday stays focused on Jesus. So that means that even though they are there, we're not going to draw attention to the organization. We're going to focus really on, um, you know, really on the focus of our religious point in the community period you know and so um and so those are the you know and so and so those are the conversations uh that that, that we're going to have um um in church today and so um another thing that we're going to close off with is you know going back to the title if you if you remember the title we said what is my purpose in any given moment and we'll close out with part of our purpose is to be available and obedient to god you know, to be available and obedient. And what I want to um, invite the students and anyone else who's there to, 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 to think about is put the question in this way. So I said, what is my purpose in any given moment? We're going to rephrase the question and we're going to talk about what does love require of me today? What does love require of me today? And so I think that when we ask the question that way, it really kind of removes, I think, in some way, the only or the solo focus of just thinking about our engagement with each other based on the laws of the Bible or the laws of any religious text. It goes past that. I think that when we think about the question that way, it will help us. Hopefully, it helps us to start thinking about not just looking at each other like what we see on the surface, but but to look at each other and try to see each other past the surface, like walk in one another's shoes if possible. Try to learn a little bit of what, you know, like what 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 other people are thinking. Try to think about what other people are going through as well as myself. So then that way I can engage with them more. And so uh and so today and maybe what I should do is probably get on Facebook later, do a Facebook Live and maybe ask those questions on Facebook Live. And maybe uh, take questions just like we did last last was it last Tuesday and the Tuesday before then, when I was on Facebook Live and we had people you know talking back and forth. Maybe what we'll do this evening, you know, and I'll and I'll take a cue from people. You know, you can let me know those who are here. Maybe later in the week because I forgot I got a concert tonight. I'm going to go see D1 in Chapel Hill. Uh, he's a Christian gospel artist. Matter of fact, let me ask anybody out there if you want to go. Hey, email me at Thomas R. Easley at EasleyBranch.com. We may actually still have free tickets for you to go if you want to go. I mean, the brother's live and the brother, he puts it down. So anyway, that's the sidebar. So now what I want to do is I want to go back to the scripture that we're going to reference today. And while, while I do that, oh, well, I don't have to grab my Bible, even though it's sitting right there. I got it right here because I'm looking at the show. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk, we're going to take it back to two scripture, which I think is really important, you know, for what we're there for. And we're going to look at Mark 10 verses 17 through 24. Now, those who are familiar with that passage probably know verse 25. Okay, you know when Jesus talks about it's easier for a camel to get through an eye of a needle than for, you know, a rich man to get into heaven. But we're not going to focus on verses 17 through 25. We're going to focus on 17 through through 24. And so what happens in this passage is Jesus is talking and a rich man comes up to him. And so I'll, 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 read, I'll read some of it. Uh, it says, as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 18, 
Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. Now, I want to pause right there. OK, because I think that that response in some ways is part of the posture that we need to have. As part of that answer of what is required, like what does love require of me? Um, basically, at any given moment, you know, here's the one like for those who are Christian or those who are practicing Christians or whatever. The object of our religion or our, or our faith is saying to this man who just called him a good teacher. He say, he's saying to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Think about the humble posture that that he's taking. You see, he, like I'm here doing God's work, but there's no need for you to call me good because I'm here for I'm here for a purpose. I'm not here for myself. I'm actually here for you and I'm here for the one who sent me. Now, let's just kind of back up and let's put this into let's kind of put this Let's culturally appropriate this if you if you don't mind. I'm just gonna put myself in that situation. I'm kind of acting like my brother Dez who just got online. What's going on, Pastor? If I'm talking to people and I'm just talking and teaching, and someone comes up to me and they go, Hey, my brother. And then I look at them, <laughs> you know, and I look at them and I go, Okay, what's up? Thank you, Janae. I definitely do my best to try to, you know, like break, break things down. You know, so I look at them and I go, oh, so I'm your brother, huh? Um, why do you call me your brother? You know, like we just met. So what I'm really saying is you're approaching me like you know me. Right. And you're, and you're giving me a compliment, but you give me a compliment with no information. Like you give me a compliment with no um like you have no real clear understanding of who of who of who I am. So instead of giving me a compliment, which is nice and and allowing and me standing here and allowing you to blow my head up, what I'm going to do because I'm not here for control. You see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of check you a little bit and let you know what I'm here for. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm here for a different purpose. So I'm not here to be praised. I'm not here to even be honored. And I want us to, to notice that the one who came to save the world was not there to be honored or to be served. You see, yet and still to this day, that's what we tell people that that's what we're supposed to do now as Christians. Like we're here to honor and we're here to serve the Lord. But basically what he's saying is I'm really, I didn't even come here to be served. You know, I came here to save. I came here to help. You know, and so I wonder what happens when people come into a neighborhood or come in with that posture. I'm here to help. I'm here to protect and serve because here's the thing. It's no one's job to be respected. I think it's everyone's care and desire to be respected. Like, I want you to respect me. I don't want you to dislike me. I don't want anybody to to dislike me. I mean, I got friends now who, you know, who know people who may not think highly of me now. You know, I don't want anyone to not think highly of me. I don't want anyone to not like me. At the same time, I don't care if people do or don't like me. You know what I'm saying? Because probably if they do or don't like me, it's because they got one perspective, but they don't know me completely, <laughs> you know? So I don't get too caught up in that. But what I do understand is that sometimes how people feel about you can impact where you go and, and what you do. So I'm mindful of that, but I don't care, you know, like, you know, for real, because that's not going to do anything for me and do anything for, you know, like in some ways to, to, where, to where I'm going. So back to Jesus. And then he tells the guy, he said, you know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud under your father and, and your mother. And what the guy said was teacher, he declared. I want you to notice that. I love what he did. He didn't, he didn't say good teacher no more, did he? He just said teacher. He said, all these I've kept since I was a boy. It makes me think about some recent interactions that I've had where like I work with people that I've had to kind of check and tell them, you know, and, and see, this is one of the things, you know, like that sometimes people need to do, but depending on dynamics, you can't do, right? So Jesus checked the guy. Once he checked him, he came at him differently. I've had to check people before and tell them, like, no, I'm the authority of things around here. I'm the one who who was hired here to do this work, so you need to respect me as such. Sometimes we have to do that to people in order for them to respond in a way that helps them get the help that they need from us, too. And I've done that to people, and it's funny, once you do it, People will actually respond the way that you tell them to after that, right? 
But what I also like that's funny is sometimes people get indignant and they act like they've been responding to you like that the whole time. And then all of a sudden now, oh yeah, you are the man or you were this or you were that. And notice that this man did the same thing. Teacher, his, his tone changed. Remember, it was good teacher at first, now it was teacher. You know, people do that all, all, all the time. But anyway, he says, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Verse 21, and Jesus looked at him and loved him. I thought that was big. Say he looked at him and he loved him. He said, one thing you lack, he said, <laughs> go sell everything you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And that this, the man's face fell, and he went away sad because he had great wealth. I want to pause there within the story. I want to pause there. First, it said Jesus looked at him and he loved him. He loved him. Like, you know, it's like, because Jesus knew something. G, right there you go the part that people don't like Jesus knew that even though this man see the, the first thing is whoever thinks that they are righteous and doing everything right right there 9 times out of 10 you are wrong probably 10 out of 10 you're wrong just from that posture coming into the situation so going back to what Andy Stanley was saying this morning when he was teaching about race racism and and religion you know for, you know, like he was like, you know, like there, there are some people, you know, who kind of go, you know, explain it to me, you know, like, you know, like tell it to me, you know, help me, help me understand more. And what he kind of brought out was while, yeah, we do need people to understand more and we do need to communicate that he was like, but think about what's really happening when you say, explain it to me and tell me more. It's like, while you're saying, tell me more and explain it to me so that I can understand that time is being spent to explain to some people more who don't have, who have the luxury of seeing the police as friends while you learn and more other people are still hurting while you're learning. You see what I'm saying? So while it's, so while we're opening the doors for you to get it, other people are still dying out here while, while you have to get it, you see? And so that may, so that's, so one of the dangers is that when you probably think that we should be waiting for you to get it or while things could kind of be around you or focused on you, you know, that's also part of the reason why people are suffering and struggling because we're still too busy waiting on people to get it, you know. So Jesus says it to that man, oh, so since you've been doing this as a boy, you think that because you've been doing this one thing as a boy, because you've been doing everything right in your mind, you really think that you get it and that you're right. And Jesus is like, basically loved him. I don't know if Jesus probably put his hand on his shoulder, start rubbing him or massaging him. I don't know if Jesus probably put his hand, you know, just look, you know, just like looked at him. It was like, oh, my poor child, you know. Let's make this culturally appropriate. You know what I'm saying? I'll be honest. I'm going to just be real. Somebody like, you wrong. I'll probably be sitting there thinking, boy, you stupid person. Mm, mm, mm. You really still don't get it, do you? <laughs> Nobody wants to be called stupid. I don't want to be called stupid. But it's almost like, ah, you really think you got it, huh? I'm so sorry. You want a cookie, don't you? And if you're one of those people that's unhealthy, it's probably like, you want a cookie, but you probably don't need one, do you? Mm, mm, mm. You know, and that's what Jesus was like. One thing you lack, you know, <laughs> Go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. So what he's saying is that that one thing that you don't want to let go of, that, that one thing that you probably think is okay to hold on to, is the thing that's holding you back. So for some people, that one thing, like that one thing of, well, I just need somebody to explain it to me, you know, because it seems like other people just don't seem to get it and, and they don't get it wrong. That It could be that one thing that's holding you back from getting what you need. It could be that one thing, that one thing that you may think is really small, but what Jesus was showing is that that one small thing to you is really the biggest thing probably in your life. It's the big, because it's the thing that has control of you. It's the thing that has you on, on lockdown. For some people, it's their ignorance. For, for some people, it's their privilege. For some people, it's their resources. It's their money. For some people, it's... Um, it's their intellectual stuff. For some people, it's their title. Like people who got degrees and got a bunch of titles. Like, like for some people, it's your position at work. You know what I'm saying? For some people, it's your silence. Like even though some people may be thinking that it's cool for me to be chill and be quiet and I just want to learn and sit back and take it in. You know, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate that, my, my sister. You know, it could, uh, it could really be that your silence is the problem. For some people, maybe you talking too much is the problem. You see what I'm saying? But no matter what it is, even when you think that you're doing it, and when you think that you got it, he, Jesus is saying, actually, no, you don't, because it's bigger than that. And then Jesus looked around, because remember, the man walked away sad, and Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. 
And the disciples were amazed at his, at his words. But Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. And I think that the kingdom of God can be seen literally, spiritually, or symbolically. You know, and when I think about the kingdom of God, let me speak about it literally. For those people who believe in the kingdom of God, who believe in heaven, it's hard for people to enter heaven, number one, because if you don't have genuine, real love, how can you really enter into heaven? And a lot of people don't have genuine, real love towards everybody. They have genuine love maybe towards their family, you know, with those that they care about, their friends or that they love, but not genuine care towards everybody. So right there, I think that literally is going, this is one reason why it's going to be hard for people to enter the kingdom, because we really all don't have genuine love for each other in the first place. That's the first one. So I said literally, and then I said was well, spiritually, and then I said uh, um, 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 symbolically. So then spiritually, it may be literally and spiritually kind of put together because, you know, I don't want to, you know, kind of approach the spiritual uh, you know, in a uh, in a um, perfunctory type of way, like not as serious, you know, because it's hard to explain spiritual all the way. But, you know, but I do want to just, you know, try to explain it. So spiritually, when we think about getting into heaven is where where are you emotionally, you know, like spiritually and maybe even mentally? Right. Well, see, if you don't have real love for 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 everybody here again, it's hard for you to enter the kingdom. And that love spiritually will show in your finances. If you if you were like that or your economics, it'll show in your relationships, because spiritually things should permeate into every other part of your life. Right. It is showing how you work with people. It is showing how you how you give your money. It is showing how you, you know, for those who tithe in church, how you tithe or to be how you do things in the community to be how you are with your neighbors. Like. It's hard, you know, like it's hard for people to get into heaven when they probably aren't even neighborly and they don't even realize it. You know, so like how many of us actually talk to our neighbors or don't talk to our neighbors? And then the symbolic part. And I think for today, well, what's going on today, especially what just recently happened in Tulsa and what's going on in Charlotte, North Carolina, you know, what's recently happening, what's just been happening, period, that that probably is the biggest thing, you know, like for people to grasp. Martin Luther King said it best. The most segregated time in the country is Sunday morning at 11 a.m. So I know that even though we love the Lord and we love Jesus, right, a number of us are going to go to places of, of worship where it's just majority black, majority white, majority Latino, majority Asian, you know, you know, like that's 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 where we're going to go. So symbolically, a lot of us even worship that way. And even for those people who don't go to church, right, you know, so you probably sit in the confines of your home. Or go and do, you know, and do, and, and do and do some other things. But when we're engaging with people, are we engaging outside of our comfort zones? Are we engaging with people who don't think the way that 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 we do? Are we engaging with people who don't look the way that we look? And if you look around all the time, and if and if you know, and it's almost like just like take a cue, like who comes into your house? If the people who come to your house always only look like you, there we go. They're a part of the problem. Uh, the people that you hang out with, if they always only look like you, here we go. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying be false and fake and get out here and just connect with people just because. I'm just saying just take just take inventory of that. Just just take notice of that, that even what we do just regularly, if what we do is always with folks who are just like us and who look like us, um, then right there it's kind of limited because that means that we're not fully engaging and really stretching ourselves and learning ourselves. So I really like that approach, and I love how Jesus did that because that just put it in the man's face. It was like, hey, look, you may think you're following commandments, but guess what you're not doing? You're not following the ultimate, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. You know, so let me close on some of the points, you know, because I've really only got a minute left. You know, I know I'm going to probably just go a couple over, but not much because I want to respect your time. And those people who are not morning people, I want you to go back to sleep. And those who are, let's get ready to go out and do and do some things. One, when you take take that kind of posture... It helps us to recognize who you are and recognize who you are not. Okay, so number one, I am not perfect, but I am perfecting. So I don't have everything in check and I don't have everything in line, but I know that I'm working on it. Number two, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm a work in progress. So I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Number three, I'm wonderfully made, but I'm not God. Now, there are some people, if you read Psalms... Um, John 10, 34, and Psalm 82, 6, it does say in the Bible that we are gods, and even in the Quran, too. But, I mean, you're not the creator God like you didn't create everything. But we are gods because we control things and we do have power. Um, 
So when you recognize who you are and who you are not, and when you know where you are, but you know that you're a work in progress, and when you know that you are wonderfully made, you're able to be not only humble about yourself, but you're also able to acknowledge that you are not all of that. See, that's the first, you are not all of that. And as simple as it is, I really wish our military or our police people would also go through that too, so that they know that you're not all of that. Yeah, you were there to show up and to protect and serve, but guess what? We still needed to do something else. To the people who also break the law, the same thing, you know, like for you, you know, like people who are outlaws. I just finished watching Narcos yesterday on Pablo Escobar. It was actually kind of sad. I didn't know much about him when I was growing up. I just heard the name. But to watch it, it's like, wow, to see a man grow to power, had the biggest drug cartel in the world, to kind of be sized down, brought all the way down to really kind of small. He was hiding out in the ghetto, and that's where he died. It was, it was actually something tough, but... When you think you're above something or you think that you're bigger than something, you got to watch that because it'll come back and it'll implode on you um, eventually. Two, don't avoid how you feel, but don't let it control you. So if you're scared, say you're scared. If you're angry, say you're angry. If you're confused, say you're confused. A lot of us try to act like we're something that we're not or try to portray that we feel or that we think something that we really don't. It's like, no, no, no. Look, if you're scared, say you're scared. Outcast had a song in their criminal album. That's what they said. If you're scared, say you're scared. That's my number one group of all time, so don't even get me started. I might start so fresh, so clean when I'm done with y'all. If you're angry, say you're angry. If you're confused, say you're confused. And then start thinking about, that's right, Talitha, okay. What is the end goal or what's the solution to make the situation better? And I think we need that period. We need people to be thinking about what are the solutions or what is it that we need to do to make the situation better. As I put a quote up on Facebook, I said, there aren't problems. These are just situations that are lacking a solution. So we got to come up with a solution. And then I close with this. This is my final slide. We don't expect folks to do, don't expect folks to do what you aren't willing to do. Okay. So when you recognize these things about you, then maybe hopefully that'll give you the patience to recognize and reconcile things about you. Which means that if I can own how I feel, perhaps I can embrace how or what's going on inside of someone else because I know how it feels to be, and you can fill in the blank. I know how it feels to be scared. I know how it feels to be incompetent. I know how it feels to be nervous. I know how it feels to be confused. I know how it feels, you see. So if I know how it feels, that helps me to have a little bit more patience with other people. And then last, and I got this from a good close friend of mine. I think he's on checking this out. And I, and I, I learned this from him. This is his statement, but I really, I, I, I go by this every day. Is you can't solve a problem until you realize you're part of the problem you're trying to solve. You can't solve a problem until you realize that you're part of the problem that you're trying to solve. And we need more of that too. We need more people to start thinking about that, because here's the thing, here's what I do know out of everything that I said to you, and I know I ain't perfect, I know I'm not superb and wonderful and great, I just know that God didn't make no trash, I think that I'm amazing because of what's going on inside of me, and I also think I'm great because of the wonderful, beautiful, handsome people and brilliant people I have around me, that's it, you know, I am because you are, you are because I am, if you take this approach, it will definitely work in your friendships, it'll work at work, it'll work in relationships, It'll work in collaborations. That's right. That's right, Talitha. It'll work in partnerships. It, 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 it will work because that means that we do what Jesus said he came to do when, to save the world. I make my existence about you. It's not just about me. It's about you, too. So what I do impacts you. What you do impacts me. And so um, let's try to adopt some of this. Let's not approach situations like we're perfect, like we know, you know, like what's going on. Hey, I want to get facts about things too, but I got to be honest. Sometimes that time is spent, other people are still being hurt. But that don't mean that we need to rush and not do nothing. That don't mean that we don't need to get the facts. It just means that we need to own that. Look, even when we're doing that, we're probably still causing problems and it's probably still not helping the situation. See, that's being humble. That's owning the fact that there is still a problem while we're doing this and there's still more to be done. But it got to be done. So I hope today we have a fruitful conversation. I hope you all have a great one. Uh, I do hope that you got something from this. I know it's more simple because today is not going to be your typical day in church. But I really hope that those who tuned in were able to get something from this message. Uh, something that you can apply to yourself and maybe share and talk to other people. So if you like the video, I'm going to be posting this on, on YouTube soon. Share it you know, with people. Post it if you want. Appreciate that, sis. I know, I, I know, I know you do. 
If you have any uh, questions about anything or concerns, email me, Thomas R. Easley at EasleyBranch.com. I ask for your patience because I have a lot of emails coming in now. And of those who know me, you know I'm doing a lot. So I, I want to respect and respond, and I will respond. I'm just asking people to be patient with me as I get a lot of things in. You all, let's go and make this world better for ourselves and for other people that we know are struggling. Let's uh, pay attention to ourselves. Let's assess and take inventory with how we feel and what we're dealing with. Uh, remember, you're not the only one feeling the way you feel. Even if you feel in a self-indignant way, that probably doesn't help people. You're not the only one. But um, we need to start thinking about some solutions and how, and how to fix the world and come at it in, in, in a good way. And I think that what I provided is part, part, of the, part of the way to get there. Not the whole way, but part of the way. All right. So hit me up. I thank you all for getting online. Wherever else you're doing today, have a good one. I love you. I believe God loves you more. Take care. We'll be back on soon. Keep your eyes on Facebook. I'll put something out to let you know when I'm going to do what I'm going to do, okay? Peace.